Have you ever wondered how long your suspension would actually last? Or what sort of abuse your components really can take? Well, I'm in the test lab for Fox and Raceface to have a look. Let's go. I'm here with Andrew, who's a test engineer at Fox Factory. Well, not the factory, but the HQ anyway. Um, and you're a bit of a specialist in suspension, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm a test engineer, so my job is to develop new tests and improve existing tests. We have a team of technicians that sets up the tests for us, but anytime we need to make a tweak to it, that's my job. And you've been working on bikes for the last two years, but you're not new to suspension, are you? Right, yeah, so I started with Fox eight years ago, and I was working in powered vehicles on the Ford Raptor shocks, and yeah, designing those shocks. But two years ago, I made a transition and wanted to work on bikes, and then now I'm doing test engineering. Cool, well, show us your lab. Yep. So the first uh, machine we have here is a uh, seat post it's, we call it seat post duty cycle. And so basically we're just cycling the seat posts many, many times. And so we have an actuator to press down and press on the lever. So we're kind of testing the lever, the cable, everything at once. So what would be a failure as such? So failures might be it doesn't return all the way or maybe it starts returning too slowly. And that's how you kind of come up with the hours of how many like how many hours you can ride it before servicing, that sort of thing? Is that what you're getting Yeah, about? yeah, that helps. All these machines were designed um, by test engineers here at Fox and programmed as well. And then as we kind of move on, these are moving into hydraulic test machines. So we buy these test systems, um, but then we design all the fixturing and everything to hold the shocks. Okay, so what's this testing? This test is, uh, I believe it's called oil-filled bottom-out fatigue. <laughs> so Catchy. it's basically simulating your bottoming out the shock a lot of times. And we fill the air can with oil, and then uh, we just push on that column of oil. And so the pressure that's generated is the pressure that you would see when the shock's bottomed out and we can use that to detect cracks in the air can. So I think this one actually did fail. You can see there's a little bit of oil there leaking out. So yeah, we'll have to pull it off and look for a crack. So from an engineer's point of view, or a test engineer's point of view, um, there's often that phrase, if you're not bottoming out, you're not using it properly. Like, what do you think about that? Do, should people be bottoming out their shocks or not? Well, I mean, you do want to kind of utilize the travel that you have, I think. So yeah, like the reason that a longer travel bike is more comfortable is because you're using that longer distance to slow the impact down. So yeah, I think that, that makes sense. This one was basically bending the shock. Oh, okay. So this is to kind of simulate some non-ideal loads on the shock that certain frames might put side load onto the shock. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of to test to make sure the shock can deal with that. So would that highlight when certain shocks can or can't be used with frames at all? Yeah, I think we do have some shocks, like certain frames we would recommend you use an air shock only. With the air shock, you've got that big shock body to take the bending loads. So this one is called lockout duty cycle. And basically the shock is set to a lockout mode and then we cycle it with the lockout okay. on. Okay, to see so. if it can handle still being ridden in lockout? Yeah, I think like if you go back maybe like 15 years ago and you ran down a trail with the lockout on, you might actually break the lockout, right? right. With you impact it. But we design everything so that the lockout, you shouldn't be able to break the lockout just by forgetting to switch it off. So this is just cycling through. So what were 
what you've got here. This one is a spring fatigue test. So you'll see it does a couple of different steps. Um, right now it's doing a slow characterization. So it's just basically taking a measurement of the spring and then it moves into the actual fatigue portion. Right. So it's basically taking the spring to its full travel and we're gonna monitor for any changes in the spring, see if it breaks. Okay. So just complete, just the spring, not the shock. There. Yeah, this shock actually has no oil in it. We're just using it to hold the spring. Okay. But we would also see in this case, if the spring perches have, you know, some sort of structural issue, we would be able to see that here too. This one it has something to look at on the computer screen as well. But this is a fork torsional stiffness test. Yeah. So this one isn't designed to break the fork. It's just a measurement of the stiffness. So you can see it's... Kind of see the legs move, right? Yeah. Is that... You can see over here the, the steerer tube is twisting. And so, yeah, the crown is also twisting and then everything is basically twisting. Yeah. So by torsional stiffness, you mean like pressure on handlebars and how much that twists the fork, right? Yeah, maybe you're in a rut and you're steering yeah. against the rut. Um, yeah. This is basically going to tell us how stiff the fork is in that direction. And do you push that to fatigue or are you just looking for... We're basically just looking for a number or a, a, a curve on the computer screen, which we can take a look at. So this one we have set up to show the difference between the previous generation 32 step cast and the new 2025. Right, so you've got the red one is previous, blue yeah. is new. Yeah, that's right. So this is plotting torque vertically yeah. versus angle. So we're applying the same torque to both forks, which is why they're aligned kind of this way. But you can see that the blue one has much less angle, like zero is in the middle. Um, so that means that this is a lot stiffer. Like basically steeper is stiffer okay. because we have less angle for the same amount of load. Right, so you can apply more torque and it won't move as much yeah. effectively. Yeah, exactly. Wow, and that's all thanks to that new arch. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's pretty incredible what that arch has done. Because I guess it'd be interesting to kind of pull up some other forks too, but like this was kind of the comparison that we wanted to show, but this is actually approaching like some of the trail bike forks in oh, terms wow. of torsional stiffness. Amazing. Yeah. Do you know what that max angle was at all? Um, it's something like four or five degrees for the, for the load that we're using. This is a fork friction test. And what we're doing is we're, we've got two actuators on this test. So this one is pneumatic and it's applying a side load to the fork, or like a fore aft bending load. So okay, yeah. if you had a slack head angle, it would want to you know, bend the fork outwards, or right. if you hit the brakes, it's gonna bend rearwards. And so we can do both both directions with this. And then we can study how the friction changes with those different loads on it. So you'll notice that it's sometimes moving slow and then it starts ramping up in speed. We're looking at breakaway friction and dynamic friction. Okay. And what's good and bad? Like, what are you looking for here? We usually always want to minimize friction. It's always something that um, basically lower friction is gonna be a better feeling fork. Yeah. Um, so this is effectively testing how good a fork feels like actually dynamically on the trail rather than because in, you know, just pressing it in a car park feels great, right? But once it starts bending, it will yeah. start to create more um, resistance. Right, and yeah. we want uh, we want the fork to be always providing like a consistent feedback to the rider too. So you don't really want it to depend heavily on like, are you braking or not? Um, you just want consistency. So this kind of can help show us how much that friction will change under different conditions. Oh. Yeah, well, can you guess what this one? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. obviously we have a brake rotor mounted to it. So this is a, a brake fatigue test. Oh, okay, yeah. So we're bending the fork, but it's also, since the brake is basically locked to the fork, yeah. um, we're 
putting more load onto the leg with the brake. Yeah, that's one heck of a rotor you've got on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> like to test with like extremes, right? Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. And would this affect the CSU as well, or the stanchion as well? Yeah, like you might see cracks in the upper tubes eventually, or sometimes it would be near the brake, okay. um, just depending on you know, their particular fork. And do you test like one from certain batches of forks or is this only ever a test performed on new products? So we do, I think like three different, um, call it phases of testing. We do like engineering development testing. And then when we finally have a design that we think we want to go to production with, um, then we'll do what we call design verification. So that means the design is what we intend to go to production with, but maybe the process that we used to manufacture it was a little bit different than the you know final production intent. Then once we know that the design of the product is good, then we move on to production verification testing. And that everything has to be like off of the final tools and processes that we're gonna be doing in production. This test is uh, what we'd call a profile test. So somebody rode a trail on their bike and we had telemetry on the bike and measured what the fork did. And this is basically just replaying that trail. Oh, wow, okay. And what does that tell you? Like why, why isolate that particular trail or whatever? Yeah, basically what it allows us to do is just, you obviously can't ride 24 seven <laughs> um, right, so the, but the machine can. We can just cycle the fork many, many times, and um, in the matter of a few days, we can simulate the lifetime of the fork. And right. so we're just looking for like durability of internal components, make sure nothing leaks, things like that, seals, um, internal valves. So like simulating how long you could actually theoretically ride a trail for. Yeah. So this gives you service life again? Yeah, yeah, this would help um, inform our service life. Yeah, um, we got very similar tests for rear shocks. So again, another trail recorded profile. This one also, you notice there's a string there. So we're hanging some weights over a pulley and oh, so yeah. it's applying a side load to the shock. Um, right. Yeah, again, depending on the frame, maybe that side load gets introduced and we want to see how the shock can hold up to that. So this is a wheel lateral stiffness test. We have two actuators on it and one actuator, the actuator that's kind of in line with the wheel, that's simulating the rider's weight on the wheel. So we can change that. And then the other one is bending the wheel laterally and so like a cornering load. And we're measuring different displacements on the wheel so we can basically get a nice map of what a wheel might feel like, like get attributing actual numbers to the ride feel of the wheel. Okay, because compliance you can measure in say millimeters, for example, yeah. and work out how damped or comfortable that feels. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then this one, I think, always surprises people a little bit, um, how much your handlebars can actually move. But yeah, this is a handlebar fatigue test. And we've got two stages. This one is kind of like a sprint stage. And then we have another one where the force is in phase, moving together. So this is the kind of lateral compliance that you can physically measure and then start talking about comfort, right? Yeah, exactly. So we could use this setup to measure compliance just by monitoring the load and the deflection. Um, but then we also use it for fatigue testing where we're counting cycles to failure. Any numbers on cycles? Uh, this one, I was actually just talking to one of our technicians about it and he said the carbon bars basically don't break on this <laughs> test. 
um, like wall breaks, um, stand bolts, like the bolts holding the bar to the stand, those will break and then you'll have to replace them and it, it kind of just keeps running. Then we've got another wheel machine. This one's a little bit more complicated. Um, what it does is it actually drives the wheel with the chain. Okay. So we're putting drive forces into the hub, especially for e-bikes, you know, with very strong motors, then we need to test for, for those loads. And it also does a rocking stage, which you can see it doing now. Yeah, so we can get the kind of sideways load as well for cornering. Andrew, thank you so much for letting us sneak around your workshop and your lab. Uh, it's been really interesting. But um, if anyone has any questions on any of the tests you've seen, the comments are down below. Um, maybe Andrew might answer some, but I'll certainly answer some as well if you have any burning questions. So leave them down in the comments below.